You know you have hormonal acne because you see your acne challenges change throughout the month with your cycle, but you just can't figure out how to get your hormones in balance. Am I right? Today, I'm sharing six main hormonal imbalances that are impacting your acne, plus six action steps you can take every day to start to balance out those hormones a little bit better, plus my five favorite hormonal acne healing herbs. So let's discuss. Hi there, my name is Jill Therese, and after 15 years of struggling with my acne, I finally cleared my skin naturally, and I created my acne clearing program, The Clear Coat, to help you do the same. 12 years and thousands of clients later, I've made it my life's work to get you clear skin without harsh chemicals, pills, and or crazy hormones. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video. The six main hormonal imbalances that are negatively impacting your skin are high cortisol, low thyroid, low progesterone, high testosterone, estrogen dominance, and insulin resistance. Now, caveat, you can't cherry pick your hormones to fix them, like just take a pill for one and fix one and everything is better. Try to think about all of these hormones working together like a symphony in your body, a symphony of instruments. So we'll talk about the signs and symptoms of each plus action steps we can take. And the most important thing that I would like to share about that is that your body's constantly moving through life kind of like a wave, right? It has cycles and seasons even throughout your month. So the goal is to really support your hormones, not so much balance them out so that they're at a perfect level. That never really happens, okay? Some common signs of a high cortisol are when you're under a ton of stress and or you're not sleeping well. You're experiencing kind of these high volumes of panic. You're always feeling tired. You have sleep disturbances, mood changes. You're thirsty, right? And when you're dealing with high cortisol, you have high levels of adrenaline, epinephrine, and all of these hormones can probably cause a lot more oil at the pore, which then can lead to acne. Low thyroidism is pretty common with women and can often lead to drier skin, hair loss, poor circulation, a lot of inflammation. It can lead to some irregular periods, depression, concentration issues. This is a rather commonly diagnosed challenge for women and one that's often really easily remedied. Again, Speak to your doctor because I'm not one. But if you have kind of low thyroidism challenges, right, just like an underactive thyroid, mildly underactive, don't worry too much because you can always take a few action steps that will really support you. I see low progesterone impacting acne often these days, to be honest. And one of the most common ways you know you have low progesterone levels is if you get your period every three-ish weeks. So if you get your period every 21, 22, 23 days and you break out a lot on your period, you have a lot of kind of insomnia, increased anxiety, you might be dealing with low levels of progesterone. Again, super common. This is an example of a client with low levels of progesterone. And once we took really specific action steps for her in the clear code, she saw a huge shift in her skin. So please know that clearing your acne naturally, even if you're dealing with low progesterone levels, is a totally possible thing for you to do. I usually see high testosterone with clients who've been diagnosed with PC. PCOS. And that being said, PCOS is just a constellation of symptoms, usually linked to insulin resistance, a lot of blood sugar management stuff, maybe some cysts on your ovaries. A few other signs and symptoms are that you have like a considerable amount of facial hair here or here, and you have hair loss on your head. So by that, I mean hair loss, like let's say you go like this, right? And you can see to your scalp from here, for example, that would be hair loss. Or if you felt like you needed to shave your chin because you have so much hair. A few little baby hairs here or there, even black coarse hairs, like that's kind of normal. But if you have 10 to 15 dark hairs under, under each side, that's a different story. Estrogen dominance is a very common hormonal challenge that I see with the majority of my clients in the clear code. And it usually happens after coming off the birth control pill. And you're usually struggling with some type of constipation challenges, weight gain, bloating, a feeling of kind of heaviness, puffiness, pre-period, tender breasts, all of these like hallmark symptoms for estrogen dominance that I have a feeling if you're watching this video, you have. My client Alexa really struggled with some estrogen dominance challenges. And once we identified her root acne triggers via our clear code protocol system, we were able to take really specific, amazing action. And she saw massive shifts in her skin in just a few months. So please know that if you're struggling with estrogen dominance, number one, it's very common. And number two, very easily fixable as well. Another hormonal imbalance that's most likely contributing to your acne is some insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is very complex, usually just means that your body isn't responding well to the effects of insulin. So basically your cells aren't using insulin the way they should. Again, from a mild to moderate insulin resistance perspective, this is something that can be resolved via diet, exercise, lifestyle changes. If someone tells you you have insulin resistance, again, I'm not a doctor, speak to them. But generally speaking, if someone says, hey, you have a little bit of insulin resistance going on, there are some very specific action steps you can take 
to help your body process through insulin, use insulin better, and to be more responsive to that. But that being said, you might see you're, you're thirstier, you're not sleeping as well. Maybe you have a lot of skin tags. That's another common sign of insulin resistance and or your cycles are kind of irregular and or you've been diagnosed with PCOS. So there's a lot of different things that insulin resistance impacts. So it's kind of like an umbrella that sits over a lot of other challenges. Okay, so now that we've gone over those six hormonal challenges, let's go over action steps for each of them. I actually, as I wrote this out, I realized I'm going to give you way more than six action steps per, per issue. But that being said, only pick two to three action steps. I don't want you to take this whole list of action steps and do 42 things in one day because then you'll get overwhelmed and you'll stop. And we don't want that. From an insulin resistance perspective, I want you to have healthy proteins and fats with every meal. So we're talking 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal. And you could check out a supplement like inositol. I really like this Thorn brand supplement from an inositol perspective. It has been shown to positively impact ovarian health as well as blood sugar management. Again, check with your doctor, but I do like that from an overall supplements perspective. I have no affiliation. From a low thyroid perspective, grabbing three Brazil nuts a day can be helpful to kind of upregulate your thyroid a little bit. Now, again, 18th time I've said this in this video. Check with your doctor first. I'm not a doctor. But that being said, if you know you have some hypothyroidism challenges, they may be very simply resolved by just adding in a few Brazil nuts every day. From a low progesterone perspective, there are kind of two action steps you can focus on. Number one, some blood sugar management stuff will be dramatically helpful. So high proteins, high fats at every meal. And a supplement you can check out is something like Vitex Agnes Costas. It has been shown to positively upregulate progesterone levels. So if you wanted to check something out like that, always check in with your OBGYN, but it may be an herbal supplement that could support low progesterone levels. From a cortisol imbalance perspective, I actually have kind of a very specific action step for you to take. And basically what you need when you're dealing with high cortisol is stress management stuff, right? I can tell you all day to like meditate and exercise and all that, but like stress management is very complex. I think we can all agree. So that being said, one action step that I take from a stress management perspective that has a huge impact on my life is I brain dump 10 minutes a day in a journal. And I literally write down whatever's on my mind. It can be like uh, laundry. I am sad, right? It can go all, all over the place. That's kind of the point is that you're brain dumping truly. And so that being said, I'll set a timer. I'll put some headphones in and I'll put like ambient noise on so that I'm just writing out whatever is happening in my mind. And it can be a really great way to kind of lower some stress, take a look at what you're thinking, what thoughts are creating the feelings of overwhelm or anxiety or stress that are leading to some high cortisol levels. So I really like brain dumping for 10 minutes. From a high testosterone perspective, there are kind of two herbs that I really like you could check out. Spearmint tea. It was shown in one study to lower androgen levels in women. Now, they had at least two well-steeped cups a day. So you could just grab two spearmint tea bags, flop them in a tea cup, and let it steep for quite a while, right? And that could really potentially help to lower just some androgen levels, testosterone levels at the pore. Or you could check out a supplement like salt palmetto. This has been shown to positively impact testosterone levels. So you could check out salt palmetto as well. And from an estrogen dominance perspective, that, that very, very, very common hormonal imbalance I see with most of my acne clients. There's so many different action steps you could take, but there are two herbs that I really like. One is very easy. It's a dandelion tea. I'm sure if you've watched anything I share, you will hear me talk about dandelion tea because I love it so profoundly. But basically, dandelion tea is an herbal cologog that supports bile flow from your liver. So using dandelion tea nightly before you go to bed can be really impactful from a digestion perspective. Milk thistle is another herb that works similarly to dandelion tea. So that's something that you could check out. Again, always check in with the doctor. And a note on estrogen dominance. This is a very specific niche note. And that is, if you're struggling with estrogen dominance, there's a high possibility that you are constipated. And if you're constipated, there's a high possibility that you're not drinking enough water. I see you. If you struggle with acne here and you recently came off the pill any time over the past year and you struggle with constipation, make sure that you are having three liters of water a day or over 100 ounces. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I promise you, as a fellow constipated girly, water is your friend, okay? And you are not having enough if you're chronically constipated post the birth control pill. I know you. I see you. Now, that being said, if you want to go deeper into some hormonal acne support, we have a cycle syncing guide that you can download via a link below to really help you track your cycle and eat in a way that supports clear skin from a cycle perspective. So we go over the four different phases of your menstrual cycle, menstrual, follicular, ovulatory, and luteal, as well as what foods to eat throughout those phases to best support clearer skin. 
So if you want to download that, download that via the link below. That being said, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new one. And if you have a friend, mother, brother, sister, auntie who struggles with acne, please send them over this video so that they could at the very least feel like there's a there's hope for them from an acne clearing perspective because there is. See you in the next one.